Hey, it's uh, Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. I wanted to show you how to create a really simple schedule here in Microsoft Project. So, um, yeah, if you're if you're looking to get started on your on your project, um, hopefully this will this will just be a quick guide for you to be able to jump in and create something uh, simple and have some basic tools to be able to perform getting the schedule done. So I have uh, Microsoft Project open right now. I'm going to choose uh, create a blank schedule here. So here is my blank schedule starting from scratch. Uh, so I'm going to start by creating the the summaries. I guess I call them the, the, the work breakdown structures, the, the buckets that we're going to put our activities in. So I'm going to call it milestones, procurement, construction, and close out. And uh, I want some I'd, I want some WBS section, sections underneath procurement. So I'm going to use my insert key on my keyboard a few times. Insert, insert, insert. And I'm going to do a prepare and submit section underneath procurement. I'm going to do review and approve. And then I'm going to do fabricate and deliver. So I want those to be children of procurement. So I just highlight them and then I can just press indent here and now they become children to procurement. And then if I want to create tasks underneath prepare and submit, review and approve, and fabricate and deliver, I can do that by just saying uh, maybe I'll have an earthwork submittal, um, prepare and submit, maybe we'll have uh, structural steel. And maybe we'll have prepare and submit roofing. And I want those tasks to be children to prepare and submit. So let's do that. There we go. So now we have uh, this procurement section, a prepare and submit section. And then I finally have my tasks underneath there. Uh, so let's copy those tasks and then let's put them underneath the review and approve. So I just copied and pasted it underneath review and approve. And then I'm going to highlight all of those, indent them, and then I'm going to change this description to review and approve. Approve. Let's replace these guys here. We'll call those review and approve, and review and approve. And then I want to do the same thing for fab and deliver. So let's go ahead and do that. I copied and pasted those underneath there. Let's do that. Oh, actually, we don't need an earthwork delivery. Let's just do structural steel and roofing. So I'll do fabricate and deliver structural steel. And we'll have one for roofing as well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's create some construction tasks. I can delete this row because I don't need that. Let's, I just like pressing insert a bunch of times give, give me some space underneath construction here and uh, let's just do a couple tasks here we'll do uh, earthwork foundations slab slab on grade structural steel envelope roofing and interior put out okay and I want those to be children underneath construction so let's go ahead and indent those. I can delete this guy here because I'm not going to use that. And maybe I want a few closeout items. So let's do commissioning and final punch list. Indent those. And let's create a, a few milestones as well. Let's do, um, we'll do notice to proceed. That's pretty typical. Um, building weather type. Building weather tight, and then substantial completion, and then we'll indent those underneath there. So now we have like the basic skeleton of our of our uh, schedule, and maybe the next thing that we can do is start adding relationships. So one of the things that I like to do is I'll uh, I'll click on the first activity in the sequence that I I, I want, and then I click in the order that I want those 
activities to be linked together, holding the control key on my keyboard. And then I can just click here, link the selected activities. And you'll notice all of those get linked together. All right. So then let's do the same thing for a notice to proceed. We can do start with notice to proceed, then structural steel, structural steel, structural steel, and then structural steel. Let's link those. And let's start again. Notice to proceed and let's go roofing, 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 roofing. Link those. And now if we go to our earthwork, I want to link earthwork foundation slab I, just in the order that uh, we have here. So I can just highlight all of those using my shift key. I start at the top, hold my shift key, and then I can um, uh, do the last activity in the sequence and then I can just link those together. Uh, the other way that you could do it if you didn't if you didn't want to do it that way is you could add columns here for predecessor and successor. Um, and so you can right click here just say insert column and then you, you there's a large selection of, of you know columns that are possible for you to be able to add. But uh, if you just start typing successor or whatever it is that you want, it'll auto filter for the, what, what can be selected with that criteria. So here's successors. And if I wanted uh, my earthwork to be the predecessor to foundations, I would just say earthwork and I could type in the next, the, the row number that I want to be the successor. So that in this case, earthwork is on row 18 and I want it to be a predecessor to row 19. So we'll do 19. And if I wanted foundations to be the predecessor to slab on grade, I could go 20. And you'll notice when I type in 20, uh, the slab on grade predecessor becomes 19, which is uh, foundation. So that's the other way if you want to if you wanted to do it that way. I, I personally just like doing it this uh, this this way, just clicking it like that, and then uh, doing the link activities up here. Uh, just seems to be a pretty easy way of doing that. A um, couple of things that I noticed, my notice to proceed activities, uh, we haven't defined the duration for those yet, and uh, they should be zero since they're milestones. So one of the things in project is anything that has a zero day duration is automatically classified as a milestone. And you'll see those over here uh, get changed to milestones. These are all, um, uh, these are manual tasks, manually scheduled tasks. I. There, you have two options in project. You can manually schedule tasks, which is really just holding the task in place according to the dates that you want, or auto scheduled, which uh, is dependent on um, the relationships that the activities have. So it's generally good scheduling practice to use uh, uh, auto, auto schedule uh, according to the relationships of the activities. So if you want to, if you click on the top, activity and you say auto schedule and then you highlight all of those task modes and then you can just fill down and that's the quick way of changing all of those tasks into uh, auto schedule and you'll notice that it changed all these as well uh, so then we can go through and start defining our durations for our tasks so maybe our our this is all, I believe this is all in work days. Let's check our calendar, type of calendar here. So there's no calendar currently assigned, but I can see here that the weekends, there's no work that's being performed on the weekend. So I'm assuming that this is a five day work week according to the, the uh, automatic calendar that we have in here. So let's say uh, the prepare and submit, let's get two weeks for those submittals. And again, I'm just gonna do my fill down here. Uh, maybe our review and approve is one week. Let's fill down there. Maybe structural steel, say that's four weeks. And roofing, maybe that's going to be uh, two months, 30 days or something like that. Um, and then we have our earthwork, let's say 10 days, I don't know, 15. I'll just put some arbitrary dates. Don't judge if, uh, if the dates don't look right. <laughs> But uh, let's say 40 days for that, 10 days, 10 days for final time. Um, so let's tie, let's, uh, I, I noticed now our milestones aren't tied in. So let's tie final punch to substantial completion. Oops. 
link those together. And if you, how the order that you click, so I clicked on final punch list first, held my control key and then clicked on substantial completion. And in that order, when you click link, it'll uh, add those relationships in the order that you clicked, which is kind of a nice feature. Let's do building tight after roofing. And there we go, we have our schedule now. So we got our notice to proceed on June 18th, and then we have our schedule going down here. So that's a really simple way of, of creating a schedule. In Microsoft Project, we added our, our work breakdown structure, added some activities underneath, um, changed the activity type based on the duration in there. Um, one of the things that we can do is we, we could add a calendar if we wanted to. Maybe we'll do that in another lesson. But uh, at least this will get you started in Microsoft Project for creating a really simple schedule. So hope that helps. All right. Take care.